Hello and welcome to my 2024 F1 season simulation part 7. If you missed part 6.5 or part 6, make sure to check those one, uh, those those two videos before watching this video. Uh, hopefully you will enjoy this one as well. Uh, let's get into it. So, round 7 for the 2024 Emilia Romagna Grand Prix, or the Imola Grand Prix, or however you want to call it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it has many names and one very, very long one that I'm going to include in the the title obviously uh gonna call it Imola everyone calls it Imola anyway all right um for this weekend uh it's a normal normal format for uh for this time no sprint and uh in terms of weather actually completely dry for Imola it's very unusual but luckily we got to actual race this year instead of uh floods very unfortunate floods that were very dangerous as well uh to be so last year so this time it's completely dry so uh, no rain there. Uh, I guess let's get into the upgrades first. So we only have a couple of small upgrades for each team with no big upgrades for any of the teams so far. Um, just a bunch of small, small upgrades for every single team apart from Red Bull, Aston Martin, Haas and Sauber. So let's get into Q1. In Q1, provisionally, uh, it's Max Verstappen in P1 with Charles Leclerc B2 uh, over two times behind, so the gap is uh, relatively big. Uh, the two Aston Martin is behind from, for Alonso and Stroll, uh, P5 for Hamilton, P6 Norris, P7 Russell, Piastri, Sainz, Sinoda completing top 10 with Perez, Ricardo, Albon, Bottas and Ocon uh, in the bottom 5 of those getting into another qualifying session. Uh, so far, provisionally, Hulkenberg, Magnussen, Gasly, Show, and Sargent are out in Q1. As we had into the final classification, no changes, no lead lap times, so this is how we stand. Uh, out in Q1 are Nico Hulkenberg, Kevin Magnussen, Pierre Gasly, Gwen Yujo, and Logan Sargent. So, uh, Looks pretty pretty one-sided for Max here, but maybe we can see some surprise towards the end, hopefully. In Q2 is actually Lewis Hamilton on the, on the first place, stopping the session provisionally with Max Verstappen just behind, 7 tenths behind in P2. Then again, we have the two Aston Martins of Al Alonso and Stroll in P3 and P4, Russell P5, Sainz P6, Leclerc P7, Perez P8, Piastri P9 and Lando Norris in P10. Uh, provisionally out in Q2 are Yuki Tsunoda, Alex Albon, Daniel Ricciardo, Valtteri Bottas and Esteban Ocon. As we head to the final classification, no lead lap times, no changes whatsoever. Uh, the the uh, drivers out in Q2 are Yuki Tsunoda, Alex Albon, Daniel Ricciardo, Valtteri Bottas and Esteban Ocon with Hamilton topping the session. Uh, Let's get into Q3, and so we can see who's in pole position for the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. We have Fernando Alonso in provisional pole position ahead of Sergio Perez, ahead of Max Verstappen. Uh, and it's Carlos Sainz in P4, George Russell P5, P6 for Piastri, P7 for Stroll, P8 for Leclerc. Those, those, those margins, man. Yeah, two tenths separating the top eight. Uh, Lewis Hamilton kind of dropped off in P9 and same as Norris in P10, four tenths behind Alonso provisionally. Uh, as we had the final classification, no deleted lap times, which is weird for Imola, but I'm not complaining. Uh, no, no changes whatsoever. So we have Fernando Alonso on pole position for the Imola Grand Prix. Uh, head of Sergio Perez starting in P2, very good qualifying from the Mexican. Uh, P3 for Max Verstappen, uh, ever ever so consistent, always up there. Uh, Carlos Sainz P4, very good performance ahead of Charles Leclerc by a lot of positions here. George Russell, uh, despite being uh, quite significantly behind Hamilton in the first two qualifying sessions, managed to come out on top by over two tenths of a second, so very good performance from George Russell. Piastri, same as with uh, Russell, uh, seem seemingly Norris was the better driver for Imola, but we saw in, uh, Piastri in Q3 just pulling two tenths on Norris, which is also very, very interesting as we know Norris just, just how good Norris is on, on this track, uh, same as Lewis, so those two beating their teammates by these margins is pretty pretty interesting, to say the least. Okay, a very exciting grid for tomorrow. Let's see 
how it looks like. Fernando Alonso lines up on the pole position ahead of Sergio Perez in P2. Uh, the rest of the grid is Max Verstappen in P3, Carlos Sainz P4, George Russell in P5, Oscar Piastri in P6, Lance Stroll P7, Charles Leclerc P8, Lewis Hamilton P9, and Lando Norris in P10. Uh, the bottom 10 begins with Tsunoda in P11, Albon P12, Ricardo in P13, Bottas P14, Ocon P15, Hulkenberg P16, Magnussen P17, Gasly P18, Joe P19, and Logan Sargent starting that last. Let's see what will the race bring us today. As we can see the race results, we have Fernando Alonso winning his 33rd picture, uh, 33rd race in Formula 1. Uh, break, I'm pretty sure that's the, that's the record for the most days or most race weekends or whatever uh, between race wins as Alonso wins in this decade as well. Uh, wins in Imola ahead of Carlos Sainz in P2, very good performance from the Spaniard. Both Spaniards, to be fair, and Checo Perez in P3, so full Spanish podium this time around. Uh, it's very interesting to see uh, the rest of the grid. Charles Leclerc in P4, Hamilton P5, Landon Norris P6. Uh, you may ask, where is Max, Russell, and uh, Piastri? Yeah, um, we had we had two red flags thanks to Russell's mechanical failure which meant that he dropped out of the race, causing a red flag. But later in the session, we had another red flag from last year crashing out once again while his teammate is winning. So um, not that good from Stroll. So this meant that the order was shuffled quite a bit, which also means, uh, unfortunately, drivers like Verstappen or Piastri were caught up by the red flags, but also it brought some luck towards the other drivers. Uh, me seemingly... We have Valtteri Bottas in P8, very good performance from him, uh, held by the red flag, but for sure getting four points in the Sauber in, the, in, in, this, in this simulation is very, very impressive and good performance from Valtteri. Uh, P9 for Pierre Gasly, another good performance from Pierre, and P10 goes for Ricardo, finally beating Tsunoda in a race. Uh, and getting points over his teammate. Logan Sargent just out of the points in P11, making up 9 positions. Same with Gasly though. Uh, Oscar Piastri dropping 6 to P12. Yeah, those red flags are very unfortunate. Uh, Yuki Tsunoda in P13, Albon in P14, Magnussen P15, Joe P16, Hulkenberg P17, and Ocon, the last of the finishing drivers in P18. Uh, George Russell and Lance Stroll obviously with DNFs. So these are the race results. Let's see how it changed the World Drivers Championship standings. As we have uh, standings after round seven, uh, it says six. I'm very, very sorry for it. It's going to probably say it for the constructors as well. But uh, keep in mind, this is after round seven, after Imola. Uh, apologies again. We have Max Verstappen leading the championship uh, as usual and as we kind of expect, with two victories, four podiums, three pole positions, and for fastest laps, now having the most fastest lap out of any driver, basically. Fernando Alonso now in P2 and on 98 points, uh, thanks to that victory here in Imola. Uh, three podiums, two pole positions to, to his name as well. Very good from uh, Alonso so far. George Russell stays in P2, uh, sorry, uh, he was P2 before, so he's now dropped to P3, but still uh, stays very high in the championship in on 93 points, one victory and four podiums still tied on the most podiums with Max Verstappen. Uh, Charles Leclerc gets P4 in the Drivers' Championship right now, at 89 points uh, with victory, one victory and two podiums. Oscar Piastri stays P5 on 67 points, one victory, two podiums and a pole position. Uh, P6 for Hamilton still stays the same, 63 points and two podiums on his name. P7 for Lando Norris on P57 points, now 10 points behind his teammate only and one podium to his name so far. Carlos Sainz making up two places in the World Drivers' Championship so far, uh, now he's on 50 points just behind Lando Norris and just ahead of Sergio Perez with a one victory. Uh, actually, it should be two podiums, I forgot to change. Oh my god, there's so many things I forgot, I'm really, really sorry. Uh, Carlos Sainz should be having two podiums, one victory and one pole position. Uh, for Checo Perez, uh, Checo is finally having uh, a podium. Or finally, and beating his teammate actually, thanks to those red flags, but still a uh, good performance from Checo here. Um, yeah, I know what I did wrong. I basically gave the podium 
well, from Sainz to Hamilton, so Hamilton should be on one podium, while Carlos Sainz should be at two. Again, apologies for that. You can know that in P10, still in the top 10 with that Racing Bulls car, which is very competitive, but it's still impressive for him to be there, even though he didn't score any points this time around again. Uh, Alex Albon still 18 points, still only scoring points in one race, but that point swing, uh, that was just unreal. And still P11 in the championship, which is one points finish, very impressive with that podium, obviously from Saudi Arabia. P12 for Ocon on 11 points, P13 for Ricardo making one position, uh, finally jumping Stroll in P9, uh, in 9 points, sorry. Uh, P14 for Stroll, dropping one position to 8 points. Uh, yeah, 90 points now behind Alonso. This is looking way worse than last year, which is a weird thing to say because last year was a horrific, uh, horrific gap between Alonso and Stroll. P15 for Pierre Gasly on 7 points. P16 now for Valtteri Bottas on 4 points. Very good result from him again. Logan Sargent on 2 points in P17. Uh, Nico Hulper, Nico Hulkenberg on uh, two points as well in P18. Gwen Cho and Kevin Magnussen still yet to score points in P19 and P20 respectively. So this is how the standings look after round seven. Let's look at the constructor standings after round seven. We have Red Bull Lee taking the championship lead uh, from Mercedes. Uh, now first at 166 points with two victories, five podiums, three pole positions and four fastest laps. Uh, as we can see, actually, Mercedes should be having five podiums. I'm pretty sure uh, this translates from the World Tri uh, Drivers' Championship. Basically, Mercedes is on 156 points, dropping uh, one place in the, in the championship. One victory, five podiums, and that's about it. Ferrari gaining uh, points over McLaren and kind of getting the Constructors' fight once again with two wins, four podiums, two pole positions and three fastest laps. As we can see McLaren in P4 dropping down a bit with one victory, three podiums and a pole position. Then we have uh, Aston Martin carried by Fernando Alonso uh, with his P2 in the Drivers' Championship right now. We have a victory, three podiums and well, uh, two pole positions for Fernando Alonso. I'm not going to mention Aston Martin as a team because it's just basically Fernando Alonso racing at this point. Racing Bulls team in P6, 51 points. Uh, yeah, another no man's land area. Uh, P20, P, sorry, P7 for Williams so far with 20 points. Uh, stay the same. Alpine gets points over Williams this time again, but still just falling short in the Constructor Championship. Sauber now jumps Haas into P9, the championship picks those points from Valtteri Bottas and Haas in that last, as we would expect, Haas team being very very bad in this season as well especially uh since the development in 2023 and all the the drama now behind the team principle change and the car development being just trash uh, yeah the season is not looking for good for Haas and i would be i wouldn't be surprised if they would come out on zero points after a season but here in the simulation they have two points thanks to nico holkenberg and his heroics. So, this is how the constructor standings look after round 7. Next up is the Monaco Grand Prix uh, as the round 8. So, uh, yeah, I I really want to see Charles Leclerc doing well finally in Monaco Grand Prix. Hopefully at least a podium. Maybe a victory if all stars are aligned. Maybe, uh, hopefully we can see some exciting Exciting results, obviously, uh, as round 9 is another sprint race that should come on on Sunday with uh, the round 10 on Monday should be uh, narrated or voice over by Lebanana himself, uh, so make sure to check that one out as well. So yeah, uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and like the video, comment anything you would want me to do and you would like you would like to see more from me. Uh, I enjoyed making these and hopefully you are as well. So if you enjoyed the video, please support me and uh, I'll see you in the next one. I <laughs> See ya.